Hi everyone, and welcome to Kemp Talk, where in today's lesson, we'll introduce rate law and how it helps us determine the shelf life of products. So let's talk about it. Rate laws are expressions that relate reaction rate to the concentration of reactants. Reaction rate can be written in two different ways. In differential rate law, reaction rate is the change in concentration of reactants over time. Integrated rate law states that reaction rate is the initial concentration and the measured concentration of reactants after a certain amount of time. This is the general formula for a rate law expression. K is the rate law constant, and the M and N represent reaction orders. These are determined by conducting experiments and measuring changes in reactant concentration over time. And the overall order of a reaction is M plus N, the sum of all the orders. Now, let's take a look at an example to better understand the topics we just discussed. Determine the rate law given the following data. So in this table, we have a certain concentration of each reactant and an initial rate for each trial. The first step to writing our equation is determine the order of each reactant. If we look at reactant A, we want to see how the concentration of A changes and how it affects the rate. From trials 2 to 3, the concentration of A doubles, and the rate increases by a factor of 8. So then we say, 2 to what power is 8? Well, that would be 3, so A is a third order reactant. For reactant B, its concentration doubles from trials 1 to 2, and the rate also doubles. So 2 to what power is 2? That is 1, so B is a first order reactant. You may ask, why can't you look at the change in concentration from trial 1 to trial 3 for A or B? Well, if you notice, the concentration of both reactants are changing during this time, meaning that they're both impacting the rate. Since we want to determine how A and B individually affect the rate, we want the other reactant to stay constant while one is changing in concentration. Now, we are not done with this problem yet. We still need to determine the value for K, the constant. We do this by substituting the values from any trial into the equation. So we can pick trial 1 and write A's concentration as 0.1, B's as 0.1, and the rate as 1. Now we just need to isolate K, so you can solve this as a normal mathematical equation. You raise the concentrations to their exponents, multiply the concentrations, and then divide on both sides. So when you do this, you get K is equal to 10,000. And this tells us that the reaction rate is pretty fast, because the larger the K value, the faster the reaction rate. This method that we just used to solve this problem is known as the initial rates method. Let's take a look at this problem next. It asks us to A, determine the rate law of the equation, and B, determine the overall order. So we'll first figure out the order for each reactant. From trials 1 to 2, A's concentration triples, and the rate increases by a factor of 9. So 3 to the second power is 9, so A is second order. Um, B doubles from trials 2 to 3, and the rate also doubles. So 2 to the first power is 2, so the order is first order. And C doubles from trials 1 to trial 4, and the rate stays the same, or multiplies by a factor of 1. 2 to the zeroth power is 1, so C is a zero order reactant. Now that we've done this, let's solve for k. We can substitute the values from trial 1 and isolate k. So when you do this and you solve, k will equal 60. So now we've written the rate law, so we need to determine the overall order. If you remember from before, overall order is the sum of all the orders. So 2 plus 1 plus 0 equals 3. So our overall order for this equation is 3. So here on the screen are some practice problems for you to solidify your understanding of rate law. In the description box down below, an answer key for these problems is attached, so be sure to check that out if you need any help. Now let's discuss why rate law really matters. Well, we can actually use rate law to determine the shelf life of foods and drugs. 
By using rate law equations and carrying out experiments, we can determine the rate at which a food will deteriorate, allowing manufacturers to provide an expiration date for the item. The shelf life of drugs is determined by calculating the time it takes for its concentration to decrease by 10% from its original concentration. So rate law is really helping us consume products that are safe for our bodies and they tell us when we can consume these products. Now before you go, let's recap what we covered today. Rate law equations relate reaction rate to the concentration of reactants. These equations have K, a constant, and a certain order for each reactant. We use the initial rates method and experimental data to determine the rate law for each reaction. And rate law is super helpful in determining the shelf life of foods and drugs. And that is all for today's video. Thank you so, so much for tuning in and please visit us at www.chemistrytalk.org to access more amazing chemistry lessons. Bye.